This is an old Schaumburg Strauss radio. I don't know much about this um, radio. I haven't been able to find much documentation on it at all. Um, I know Schaumburg Strauss were a company from, I think, Adelaide. I had a guess. I'd say this radio would be from the late 30s, early 40s. I'm only guessing for the simple reason, and I'll just get up and show you. It uses octal valves, but um, the top caps, instead of being the regular, you know, as we're all familiar these days, or at least some of us are familiar with, um, the plate connection, it's actually the grid connection, which means I can safely touch it without worry about getting B plus on me. See? That's a grid. If I did that on, a, on the plate of a valve, I'd probably be dead by now. Or at least in immense pain. Now from left to right we've got the tone control, volume control, tuning and the um, mode which either puts it between the AM broadcast band or shortwave. If you look on the dial there, all the old AM medium wave radio stations are marked. Like um, for example I've got three, well, you can hardly see it, the 3KZ which no longer exists. Um, 3VW which I have never heard of. 3LO, blah blah blah, etc. etc. Down on the bottom, we got the shortwave part of the dial, which is actually marked out regarding, you know, for, with its wavelength as opposed to frequency 40 meters. You can just probably just make out it says amateur in the 40 meter amateur band 31.5, 25.5, 19.8, 16.5, 13.8, in red, which you probably just make out. It's got the countries. Obviously now it's not a good time of the day for me to demonstrate what, what the shortwave band sounds like. It's not picking up anything really. But uh, I'll just tune around the dial in the medium wave band. Let's twist again. And they were going up and down and round and round we go again. And there was an older gent that went down. Not a bad sound. Well the MCG. Ah, bloody footy again. Few weak stations. It doesn't have a fair right rod antenna, so I've got it hooked up to this long wire going across the veranda. It works pretty well. Bought it for about a hundred bucks about a year and a half ago, something like that. And it was advertised as working, it will be so. Sacred because it's sacred to but um, not only the stolen gem. Didn't didn't stop me from fixing it. I actually replaced some of the electrolytics and that. Um, also lost the grub screw for the tone control because I'm clumsy, and uh, never found it again. But uh, I might m fix that up, cut off the head, etc., and put a little slot on there. All right, here is the chassis out of its box. Looking at the valves. This one, I can only just see the number, this one right here, is a 6A8, which is a pentagrid. Basically that's used for the local oscillator and the frequency mixer. Basically um, mixes, um, shifts the frequency down to the IF frequency, the IF can from there. You've got a 6U7, which is the IF amplifier. This one here is a 1639, that's um, the audio frequency amplifier goes straight from the volume control uh, 6f6 output pento that drives a speaker and over here we've got a 5y3 GT um, full wave rectifier the speaker itself is rather interesting because it actually doesn't use a permanent magnet it's got a coil in there which is um, which magnetizes it um, basically runs DC through it turns the yeah it's basically you know, should you stop using the word basically, I'm sure that could get rather annoying after a while, but anywho. Um, it energizes um, the speaker electrically, so now that it's off, um, there's no magnet, if that makes any sense. This is one of the reasons I sort of suspect it's late 30s, early 40s, because yeah, magnets back then were rather expensive, hence the need to um, have a coil to magnetize a speaker. Uh, also serves a dual purpose as a choke for the power supply. Uh, this is the output transformer 7K for the um, 6F6. 
power transformer here, dual gang tuning capacitor, the dial lamp, antenna. Alright, let's flip this little fella over and have a look at that. Here is the underside looking like a bit of a dog's breakfast. I'm not sure if this was the way it was originally wired, but you know, it was the way I, it's the way it looked when I received it. Obviously, I replaced quite a few components in there. Of all the wax capacitors have been replaced with um, Maldery polyester jobbies. You can you see there? There, 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 there. I think that's it. Yeah. There's a couple of um, either Phillips Mullard polyesters there. Probably put there during the 60s at some point. I know it's previously was serviced because um, these two capacitors weren't there originally. There was a couple of um, Elna electrolytics which looked about 40 years old so I'll whip them out. Also um, put a bleed capacitor right there specifically so um, obviously when I turn it off well, more so you know turn it off at the power point because it doesn't actually have a power switch that the capacitors drain they don't hold their charge so when I'm sitting here poking away with my finger like that I'm not getting electrocuted no charge whatsoever. Oh, yeah, that big lump of crap there that's uh, a big thick wire which um, is uh, to the chassis see a lot of the things are hanging around in mid-air free space whatever you may say still got a lot of the original cloth covered wire it ain't pretty but it works and I suppose that's all that matters so yeah if anyone's got any information on this radio age, model, whatnot. Like I said, all I know it's made by Scharnberg Strauss in South Australia. I think Adelaide from memory. And as I said, I estimate this at late 30s, early 40s based upon the valves, the parts, just generally the way it's built. Yeah, that um, electromagnet speaker. So feel free to leave any further information that you may have in the comments. Or even if you want to post abuse, you know how it is. So, um, have fun.